U.S. Water Rockets, Water Rocket Research and Development Video, Bottle Expansion Thermal Pressure Testing. The purpose of this experiment is to determine if bottle burst pressure is reduced because of the heat generated by the stretching of the bottle as it expands. We conducted this experiment to find out the truth behind this theory as it could teach us how to change our construction methods or pressurizing procedures so that we could increase the pressures we use to launch. This would result in higher flights. For this experiment, we needed a way to measure the temperature across the entire surface of our test bottle. This would be a perfect application for our infrared thermal imaging camera. To interpret the infrared images, the scale on the right will show the maximum temperature and the minimum temperature on a color gradient that corresponds to the temperature range in the scene. The colors of the items in the scene correspond to the colors along the temperature gradient on the right. The infrared camera is so sensitive that you can write on a surface with the heat of your finger. We constructed test bottles by fitting them with PVC couplers that simulate the typical water rocket launcher and launch tube arrangement. Then we filled the bottles with water to replicate any thermal effect that the water in the bottles may have. We wanted to eliminate the potential heating of the compressed air as a factor in the bottle temperature measurements, so we placed a thermocouple inside the pressurized bottle air inlet and passed it out to our logging system through a hole in a PVC cap threaded onto the pipe. The thermocouple pass-through wiring was sealed with CA glue and then the pipes were assembled. The simulated water rocket test bottle was installed on a test rig, which we clamped securely into our workmate. A pressure transducer was used to measure the pressure inside the bottle, and this was connected to our logging system for later graphing and analysis. We made an effort to reduce the potential heating effects of the compressor on the air by passing the compressed air through 100 feet of hose, which was in thermal contact with the ground. The intent was to try and dissipate the heat of the compression using the ground as a heat sink. We also recorded the experiment with multiple HD and high-speed cameras for later documentation. Finally, we recorded the ambient air temperature by using a digital thermometer. The average temperature of the test was minus 9.6 degrees Celsius. For this video, we've plotted a typical test result with the pressure in green and the internal air temperature in blue. The video from the infrared camera is shown on the inset image. With our compressor running and up to speed, we close the dump valve to begin filling the bottle with air. You will notice fairly quickly that there is a small rise in temperature. This probably means that our heat sink did not completely remove the heat generated by the compression of the air. If you look carefully, you will see that the internal air temperature of the bottle roughly corresponds to the temperature indicated by the infrared video. The changes in bottle temperature seen in the infrared video can therefore be attributed to the temperature of the air being compressed into the bottle that was not cooled by our heatsink hose. We've speeded up the video here to show the bottle swelling as it is filled with air. At this instant, the bottle is just about to fail, and you can plainly see that the external temperature of the bottle did not change in any significant way over the course of the test due to stretching of the plastic. We observed that the bottle temperature was warming from minus 9 to plus 5 degrees Celsius during the test, but this temperature increase tracks exactly with the temperature of the air inside the bottle. We can conclude from this test data that the most significant factor in the heating of the bottle is caused by the air being compressed into it and not the self-heating caused by stretching of the plastic. We conducted some additional experiments to see if stretching plastic caused any measurable heating effect. To test this, we tried stretching and bending multiple samples of plastic and recording the temperature change with the infrared camera. These tests show that the only way to generate any significant heat in the plastic was to repeatedly flex it or stretch it in rapid succession. Simply bending or stretching the plastic one time did not generate any significant heat. This backs up the experimental findings that the expanding bottle as it is filled with air is not creating enough friction to heat the bottle in any significant way.
The swelling of the bottle is not generating any heat which would affect the maximum pressure capable of being held by the bottle. This concludes our water rocket thermal pressure testing experiment. You can visit our website at uswaterrockets.com to read the full test report for more details about this experiment. If you like this video, we'd love to have you as a subscriber. You may also enjoy some of our other popular water rocket videos, such as our 200 PSI pressure test of the slip joint bottle splice, our water rocket chase camera project, or our high altitude water rocket video. Click on the video links to watch them. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.